Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is giving another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video. A new Trap Tricks monster has been spoiled and put onto Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro. It's being released in Code of the Duelist. I've already done a review on it. I think the card is very good for what it is, but I think it could have definitely been better in terms of its effect structuring. But regardless, we are here playing a sort of very generic Trap Tricks deck. Uh, this is just something that I threw together really quickly. I'll probably test a little bit more off camera with it or maybe take some suggestions from you guys if you want to make them in the comments down below and then uh, revisit this deck again a little bit later as far as a few days from now goes. Uh, but basically, just taking my knowledge that I knew of like the 2014 Trap Tricks decks using, you know, Sacred Tree to rotate in and out of stuff like Mermelio, Dynea, Nepenthes, and like stuff like that. Um, rotating those in and out with a Sacred Tree to try and gain advantage and stuff like that and then just basically just walling up on traps. Uh, literally just playing like a Satella Knight deck but playing with trap tricks because I mean you have your Dianea, you have your uh, Mermelio to summon traps and also out back row as well. Stuff like that. Just a, a nice little mismatch of like effect gain and effect usage that you have here. But now we have a Stratos. We have a Deneb. Uh, so basically, there's some weird choices in this list like the Lone Fires and stuff but the Lone Fires are here so you can get more access into plants very quickly. Uh, for your sacred tree to use. Retaliating C is actually a really cool tech in this deck that we didn't have access to back the last time I looked at this deck with sacred tree in it, which like I said was like late 2014 when this card came out. Uh, but Retaliating C can summon itself or you can summon it off Naturia sacred tree because it is an earth insect. So at any point during the game, you can just sacred tree into a macro cosmos. Uh, and then you can send this off sacred tree to summon any of your other uh, like plant um, like uh, trap tricks and it searches your max C because it doesn't miss timing and it's just a tribute effect for sacred tree so you tribute the retaliating C summon a plant out of your deck and then this will trigger and summon and uh, search your max C so that's it's a really cool little interaction that this deck has access to it's just really gimmicky like this entire deck is trying to operate off a gimmick but like I said if you guys have any suggestions for it then definitely leave them in the comments down below this is something I just threw together really quickly um, and like there's just some really interesting like interactions of like Lone Fire Soul Charge can be Rafflesia, Nat Beast, and stuff like that. But the main point of this is that I'm just going to try and resolve uh, my Trap Trick stuff, mainly the Coronatus because that's the new card I'm trying to focus on, and all that sort of like if ands and buts and nonsense and circumstantials and all that sort of stuff. But anyway, enough rambling on. Like I said, any suggestions you want to make, leave them in the comments down below. But other than that, let's stop wasting time here and let's jump straight into the game, shall we? Alright, so I kind of really need to win Rock, Paper, Scissors here, so I have no... Yes! Awesome. Uh, this deck is super, super not capable of going second in any way, shape, or form. Uh, so I've got Soul Charge, I've got Call of the Haunted, I've got a Twin Twister. This could all be very useful uh, in some degree. Uh, I'm going to just get the Bottomless, honestly. The Bottomless seems like, without knowing exactly what to expect in certain regards... The bottomless is going to be fine. Now, we're not going to mention that card which shall not be named, because apparently that's the only way that it happens and shows itself and ruins ruins my time. Uh, so we're not going to name the card that starts with a T and also has another name that starts with a T. We're, we're, not, going to, we're not going to mess with that. I'm just going to straight Twin Twister this. Um, I don't care about taking the minus off of it, because see, this is how you do it. You don't let it resolve and let them get the search for it. You let, you kill it. You just straight up kill it. That's how you do this. Uh, but so whether or not he has a trap in his hand is going to determine uh, whether or not I'm going to be able to do anything major. I need to get access into my sacred tree. So that would be a pretty good uh, thing to have off the rip to draw into would be sacred tree. Now, okay, what is he making? He's making the earth one, which is just getting straight up bottomless like it doesn't even matter and so what I'm gonna end up doing is that if I draw another monster then fine that'd be great uh, but if I don't I'm more than likely gonna instant fusion into Norden uh, and then make something like Diamond Dyer to out one of these back rows and then call the haunt of my Mermelio uh, especially with that warning that's super powerful yes uh, so I'm gonna Diamond Dyer one of these back row and then I'm gonna call the haunted the Mermelio back and uh, and pop one of the other ones I'm basically just trying to play a resource game with him at this point I'm trying to out resource him and, uh, and outpace him, deal with his problems. Um, now the thing is, is that even if I hit something like Scythe, I don't think I'm too worried about it per se. Um, I mean it would suck. It would absolutely suck to suck. Okay, so this moral tech is coming back uh, in defense mode. Great. So now we'll call the Haunts of the Mermelio back. 
Um, not the not the Norden. We're doing the Mermelio specifically because we want it to trigger and pop this. If this is another artifact card, then that's gonna suck absolutely balls for me. Um, Trap Trick Trap Hole Nightmare. This is unaffected by that. Good shit. <laughs> unaffected by the effects of whole normal trap cards. <laughs> Good shit, my guy. Uh, but so we'll just set this warning, and so now I'm just literally gonna warning his Alaster, and hope to God he don't he doesn't have another copy of uh, of Summoning Magic, or I should just. I should just warning the summoning magic. That makes the most sense, right? Because then his Elaster dies, his summoning magic's in the grave as well. Yeah, that just makes the most sense. I need to draw into a sacred tree to start my plays moving. I need to draw into uh, a few different options for like what I need to start plays in the more progressive uh, range for me. Since my uh, soul charge is gone, my instant fusion for Norden play is gone, I've only got one instant fusion left in the deck. That's a Dianea, that's actually really good. I actually kind of want to save that because what that'll let me do is that'll let me bring back the Mermelio and pop another card. I'm just popping cards like crazy. I don't care that he plays artifacts. <laughs> let's let's be real. I'm just I I've, I've just I've shown an incredible reckless abandon of not caring <laughs> for what uh, for what he could have. Uh, but so basically he, he's sort of on the back end of this play and the back end of the game until he draws into another like magical meltdown or a laster uh, but so he's doing this which means he's gonna get a whole trap card uh, which is fine I'm okay with that because my entire deck is unaffected by these cards uh, let's be completely real the only cards that aren't affect that are affected by it are in my extra deck but if I know that it's there I'm not going to purposefully go into my extra deck so uh, so he's suiciding with these I've got a Dianea which is fine which is great um, he's got the bottomless the trap tricks trap hole nightmare mistake that he made I don't expect him to bottomless the Dianea or the Mermelio. Uh, and I know that the Moral Tech is gone. That's a Global Bulb. That's actually pretty good. Uh, if this if this stuff sticks on the board, uh, it's pretty good. But So we'll do this for Mermelio. And uh, the Mermelio, I'm not worried about this one, which I know is bottomless. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this one. Or I could have popped this one and then did something else. Ah, this is mandatory to come back. And it's mandatory to pop a set. That works out so well for me! <laughs> and he summoned it in attack mode. Well, even if he had summoned it in defense mode, um, it would have it would have been uh, just attacked over by like Utopia the Lightning. Something like that. Okay, so we're just we're just playing a resource game. We're playing a really slow, really resource-based, like or not even resource at this point, it's just a tempo-based game. Uh, but so I'm gonna attack over this and then I'm going to probably um, probably make Reflesia just because uh, it's also unaffected by any normal whole trap card he could throw at me, but also this gives me access to another trap. Now, it doesn't allow me to keep pressuring him like it would have if I kept the Dianea and the Mermelio on board. If I would kept those on board, I could have potentially normal summoned my glow up bulb, and then I would have been able to uh, do some other stuff, like make Trish, make Nat Beast, stuff like that. Uh, but Nat Beast is pretty weak to if well no it's not weak to if he had drawn another magic meltdown because I can just negate the magic meltdown. What am I saying? Uh, but so from here he's going to very likely go into Makaba, which could potentially negate the Reflesia if he has another monster in his hands. Which at this point I feel like is there. Uh, yeah, let's see. This is this kinda uh, I have to, or else he's gonna just punch over it. Um, he's going to punch over it with the Elaster. Uh, oh, it's resolving. That's interesting. Does this attached material his cost? I can't remember. Yeah, it does. Okay, so yeah, he's getting rid of the glass bell. This is going away. So now I'm on the back end of the play string because he's got access into his Elaster coming back. I think his deck is absolutely like, not not to say anything bad about him as a player, but I think that any Wind Witch invoked variant is absolutely garbage. Uh, that's just a personal thing that I have. I hate. Wind Witch Invoked variants because they just do so little and they're literally just about oh do I draw the card that I need to win or do I not and lose it's literally like that like other decks can play different game plans and different play strings based off like how things need to go um, but this deck is literally just I hope I have it <laughs> and if you don't have it then you don't fucking have it uh, but this mirror force is potentially really spicy unless he draws a trap card because I know that he has a laster in hand. He can normal that a laster. He can make diamond dire. He could pop this back row if he if he has that as a play. That's a possibility. So he's just doing that. 
I don't know if I agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. That sound that seems like that was a misclick. Yeah, okay. Well, oh my god. Did he draw a trap and then set it? And then he runs into the mirror force because he's tilted? Is that what the play is? I think that's the play. <laughs> oh, please. I want to know if this is the trap. That's a max C. Um, I'm just going to end my turn. I need access into Sacred Tree. Even Sacred Tree with this glow bulb is great because I can rotate into Mermelio, pop this card, and then I can bring back my glow bulb, make Nat Beast. And then I'm pretty much just free from this game being a problem. Uh, but he has things that he can top deck like Magical Meltdowns. He still has those. Uh, there's a lot of things that I'm really, really not worried about. But this game should have been over. Sacred Tree. Yes. Oh my god, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my god, yes. Uh, we need this to resolve. Um, that is a Mermelio. I'm okay with this. Uh, this Mermelio is perfectly fine. What, it, what I'm going to end up doing is, that's a trap. That's a space-time trap hole, so that means I'm not going to like dedicate much into the way of my, uh, of my defensive line. Uh, or not defensive line, my extra deck summons. I'm just trying to focus really hard here on what I need to do specifically, because I know that that is a time-space trap hole. I'm going to tribute this glow bulb, and unless this gets like MST'd, Solemn Warning? Really? That works? Well, alright then. Well then, now I just lose, because now I'm at 15. Wow, okay. I really want to know what this is. I want to know what this card is. If it was a trap, then that means that he that means that means he just totally misplayed. 100%. Why is he not attacking for game? What the fuck? Why did you... What? Why did he just not attack? Am I missing something? Why did he just not attack for game? There's no reason for him not to attack unless he's just m literally making fun of me. What the fuck? I don't understand. Now I'm just confused, and now I'm just trying to live. Uh, so we'll try and make this work. That's a time space trap hole, I know about that. Uh, we'll get this trap tricks trap hole nightmare. And then I'm going to mill a card with glow up, Bob. Just so that it stays on the board and I don't die. I'm gonna suicide these. Uh, trap Chicks, Trap Hole, Nightmare will work really well for me, depending on what he draws into. I'm going to do this, just so I don't fucking die to any monster in the game. Lone Fire, yeah, I didn't really want that. Uh, that's actually a lie. I would have loved to go Lone Fire for, like, Nepenthes. Uh, that would have been great, because that's a huge body. Uh, but I digress. We're, we're, not in that, we're not in that mind frame. I just need to make this deck more efficient at drawing uh, at drawing Sacred Tree. Probably putting Card of Demises in it, stuff like that. I mean, it's it's pretty clear cut that this game is going on for a ridiculous. And this is another reason why I just hate these decks, these Wind Witch Invoke decks, is that when they're pressured literally any way it possible at all, the games take fucking forever. <laughs> like, look at this. There's no reason for this to be 19 turns of gameplay. Zero reason. Zero reason at all for there to be this much turn-by-turn -turn gameplay going on when we're literally both playing trap decks that are like, hey, I'm gonna try and vomit out boss monsters. You good? Uh, like, that's... that's... that's not how this should be going. Now that got... that... that... that got striked, and that makes me sad. That makes me sad on multiple levels. <laughs> I'm just gonna end my turn. I still just wanna know what this card is! I want to know. I'm just going to keep hovering over it until you let me know what it is. Um, okay, that's an Elaster. Which means he's going to get the uh, the uh, invocation. And then I'm going to max C him when he activates it. So I'm going to rotate a card out. And uh, But I mean, honestly, this game should have been over. This game should have been over twice. I have no idea why I'm still allowed to play this game. He literally had a monster that could attack for a game. I don't understand why it wasn't a replay that occurred. Um, like, I just don't. I don't get it. And now, I'm gonna lose now, because he's playing it correctly, and summoning this, instead of just summoning, like, a Makaba. Very good. Alright. And this thing doesn't have any effects that can activate to, uh, to prevent me from losing. I think this game was all sorts of fucked. There's no reason this should have been 20 turns. This game should have ended on, like, turn 10. But, like, that, that amounts to 
Him making some very questionable plays, but I also think his deck just sucks. I think that Wind Witch and Vogue decks absolutely are garbage tier. I mean, the deck was specifically invented to beat Zoo, and it literally only beat Zoo for one weekend before it just got just absolutely trounced by the Zoo decks in the OCG format. <laughs> and like, the deck has never had any outlandish success here in the TCG either, well, even with Zoo being neutered. Like, I feel like invoked Wind Witch decks are just incredibly limiting and incredibly terrible in terms of how they function. Both of those engines are just super linear and super, like, restricting on what they need to function. It's very inaccessible because, like, you have to you have to draw Ice Bell. You have to draw a Laster or Magical Meltdown. You have to draw a 9 of. That's, like, the most, like, that's the most good thing you can say about the deck is that you have 9 Elasters. But it's a really slow and very reactive engine, and so when you're playing something like Wind Witch as your aggressive engine, where it literally only has access to one three of starter card, you start you start noticing problems, and you start noticing things that aren't really, you know, as top tip and top tier as they could be. So I think that Wind Witch Invoke decks are absolutely god awful. That's from my own experience playing them, and from playing against them, and from just theorying like how can we make this deck better, and then ultimately it just came to the conclusion of oh how do you make this deck better? You literally dropped everything but the invoked engine and you put in different engines that are faster, better, and stronger. But anyway, that's just a little bit of rambling from my end, from my own experiences and stuff like that. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe and check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages if you want to help support me directly. And Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access to a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month. So definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon itself. But I'm giving away a box of Maximum Crisis at the end of April. If that's something you're interested in, then definitely go check out the Patreon link. But if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel. I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've dealt with thus far, both shipping and pricing-wise. So definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that, that's it for this video. Unfortunately, couldn't resolve the Stratus' effect. I'll probably put a little bit more thought into another build uh, later on down the road, but I'm going to still play another video with uh, this build specifically. I just kind of threw it together. There's definitely a lot of things that could possibly change about it going forward. Um, leave your suggestions in the comments down below and all this sort of nonsense on a different Trap Tricks variant. I literally just went off like knowledge bases that I know from like 2014 um, when I built this deck. And so like I didn't put a lot of thought into it. I just wanted to try concepts out. But anyway, other than that, that's it for this video. Again, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And as usual, guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.